final straight of um, our conference. Um, lots this morning, if you were in this session, about learning in the mind. And I'm sure lots of you have been wandering around the exhibition looking at lots of new shiny things and uh, thinking they all look great, but what the hell am I going to do with them and how do I use them? Um, and so this session is actually all about putting it into practice. And um, we're very honoured to have two great speakers here today. Um, we've got Craig Taylor, um, who's a communications technologist at Durenko UK. I'll talk a little bit more about him in a second. And um, Paul Simbeck Hampson, who is with Internet Time Alliance, um, an associate of theirs. And their particular um, track, if you like, today is to help you understand how you might want to go away from here today and start using some of this stuff in a creative um, and innovative way, but practical as well, not kind of being too far off the wall, and it's actually easier than you might think at this point in time. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Craig. Craig has worked in an L&D environment for 17 years, um, initially with the British Army, so he brings quite an interesting background with him, um, subsequently in the rail industry and currently with the nuclear industry. Um, he has an increased interest in how current and emerging technologies can be used to enhance learning um, and the learner's experience. And in 2009, implemented a company-wide implementation of Atlantic Link suite of rapid e-learning. So if any of you are trying to do that at the moment, you might be a good guy to talk to. Um, this time last year, Craig was sitting exactly where you're sitting, thinking, um, I know there's a lot of stuff there, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, and so he's going to talk us through his journey since Learning Technologies 2010 to where he is today. So off you go, Craig. Good afternoon, Olympia. <laughs> Pathetic. There's, there's method behind the madness. Roll with it, go with it. Good afternoon, Olympia. <laughs> that will become apparent later on. I hope, if I can get a Wi-Fi connection in here. <laughs> um, so, Kathy's told you what I am. Let me tell you what I'm not. Before I do that, though, just up on here, we've got a text wall running. I'm very conscious of when I came here last year... Twitter was something that Paris Hilton was doing in an elevator. She was tweeting in an elevator. <laughs> I didn't have a Twitter account. I saw the value of a Twitter account from attending this conference. If you haven't got a Twitter account yet, then that's fine. But I still want you to be able to join in. So I've set up a text wall. The text wall number is here. It's, uh, it costs the same to text it as it does to send a text. So if you've got free text, it's free to send it. If it's not free, it, you'll pay whatever your standard rate is. And you need to prefix it with LT... Learning Technologies 1-1. Learning Technologies 2011 needs to prefix your text. And then you can text that number. It is anonymous, so come on, screw the nut and keep it clean. And you know, Don't heckle from over there, heckle from this side. If you are on Twitter, we'll also be rotating through a Twitter stream as well. So if you're posting tweets, you'll be able to see what you're tweeting and responses. I'll be tweeting during this, hopefully, if the auto-tweet system works. But you'll also be able to spot whatever else he's talking about. So if me and Paul are boring the backside off you then you can still engage with what's going on elsewhere. I hope that won't be the case. So as I said, Cathy's told you what I am. Let me tell you what I'm not. I'm going to have to do this quite quickly because it was 12 months since I came here. And how long have I got left, Cathy? Oh, you've got 25 minutes. 25 oh, minutes. 20 12 minutes. months. 20, 20, you said 25 minutes. 20 so minutes. I've got 25 <laughs> minutes. So you've got to cram that down into, a, into 25 minutes. It's going to be a challenge, but let's see if it'll work. What you don't have to be is an academic. I joined the army at 16, so that might give you an idea about my schooling background. You don't have to be a boffin. You don't have to be an IT geek. If there's any here, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry, but it'll appeal to the masses. You don't have to have any huge levels of academia to be able to use these learning technologies. You really genuinely don't. Not the ones that are accessible to us all today, right now, this afternoon. What you do have to be able to do, though, is you do have to be prepared to do a little bit of research. You do have to be able to prepare to talk to people, Network, we'll come on to that. Do some research on the internet. Dig out the books. Get your sleeves rolled up. You have to be prepared to fall over a few times and scuff your knees. But most of the time, scuffing your knees is free using these technologies. So other than your time, it's not a real, real big deal. So you do have to be prepared to do a little bit of research. Anybody attend James Clay's session this morning? Okay, so, yeah, I've stolen his phrase, but I promise I stole it before his session this morning. I wasn't rapidly changing it at lunchtime today. There's little old me in the bottom left-hand corner. 
waging my war, waging my negotiation with our internal stakeholders, should I say. And who do we think this is, for those of you that are in James' session? Thank you very much, Clark. The Innovation Prevention Department, or the IT department, as many of you probably call them within your organisation. I know you're probably watching this guy, so uh, it was heartfelt. So, the Innovation Prevention Department, I've been asked to talk about today, about how I have gone about influencing our IT department to enable these technologies. I had a little giggle when I read that, with Don's expectation of me, because I haven't been able to do it. And I want to be realistic, I want to be open and honest with you, I haven't been able to do it. I have struggled like, I was going to say you won't believe, but you probably will believe it because you're either about to have that struggle or you're already engaged in that struggle. It's difficult. My only advice I can give, and I've learned this 12 months too late, many might say, is if you're not the biggest, loudest, sharpest toothed dog in your organisation, take it with you. So if you need to find a sponsor within your organisation, if you need to find a stakeholder that wants you to help them solve a problem by using learning technologies, take them with you. Sell them the business case, put it to them in terms they'll understand, and then allow them to go and engage with the behemoth that is the Innovation Prevention Department. And that's not necessarily your IT department, to, to be absolutely fair. It could be other areas of the organisation as well. So if you can't win them over yourself, get an ally who can. Get allies that can, even better. A little bit of a white lie was told a few minutes ago, and it was intentional. I didn't actually start my learning technologies journey this time last year. To be fair, I started it about 18 months ago when I was tasked with looking at a suite of rapid e-learning products because we, at that point, outsourced our e-learning. We outsourced it to five or six vendors, which was great, except it meant that the learner had five or six different passwords or logins to remember. Sometimes they only did the e-learning every two or three years, so I have trouble remembering my passwords from one login to the next, let alone from one year to the next. It also meant that our L&D team had five or six databases to go to, to extract the information, to then bring it back to our system, to input it, a mammoth task. So we decided to bring our e-learning in-house. We went through a number of options, and in the end we settled on using the Atlantic Link product. Since then, the feedback has been phenomenal from the actual learners themselves. What they've really benefited from was not, not having an off-the-shelf product. Given the nature of my industry, nuclear, a great deal about what we promote as learning cannot be shared outside and probably isn't able to be shared outside because of the niche knowledge that it is. It can be when it sits behind our firewall. We can make very specific images and references and video footage absolutely focused on what that individual does, not what that process does in general. So we made a really wise move bringing the e-learning in-house. Happy to talk to anybody about that. That sort of kick-started my journey with learning technologies. But if I'm perfectly honest, and I'm being brutally honest, I thought that was it. I thought that was e-learning. And it is. It's a small piece of the jigsaw puzzle that's e-learning. What I didn't see until I'm sat probably actually I'm wait where you're sat this time last year, give or take, what I didn't see was actually it's a tiny piece of a much, much bigger jigsaw puzzle. And hopefully, I'm able to give you a few pieces of that for the rest of this session. You've got sat on your desks, a desktop calendar, a small plastic CD type case. That's yours to take away. Thanks ever so much for my department head, Neil, for sponsoring that. Cheers, Neil. And thanks very much to Sam, our graphic designer, for putting it together. That is yours to take away. So it's a little bit of a gizzit from me for you to take away, but it's also going to be the vehicle that I'm going to allow you to steer for the rest of this session. So without further ado, if you could crack it open, have a look through the slides, and anybody, anywhere, please just call out one of the months and hold it up so I can see what you're talking about. Thank you. May, thank you very much. Just one at a time. I've only got 20 minutes, but give, give me a chance. Matt, one at a time. I should have said one at a time. On your desks, most of you have got some bookmarks. Could I just ask you to write on that bookmark a website that you think would be of interest to other people in the room, given the nature of what this conference is about? You don't have to have, get, have, to have the website absolutely spot on, you know, if it's going to be a general overviewing statement about the website, that's fine. But just write on that bookmark 
a website that you think would be of interest to other people in the room. And when you've done it, sit on it. Literally. Stick it under your backside and sit on it, please. If you haven't got a pen, don't lose sleep, okay? This isn't going to grind to a halt. I don't want you to go start finding one because I've got only X amount of... I've only got 25 minutes left, apparently. Less than. Less than, less than 25 minutes left. So just sit on that bookmark, if you would. Even if you haven't written anything on it, project your website onto it and sit on it. What you have just done is the equivalent of what many people do back at their PCs. They find a website of interest, they bookmark it for their benefit later on, as long as they're sat at that PC, and that ends the bookmark of trail as such. Of course, if I'm not sat at that PC, I'm a little bit stuck. If I'm working as part of a project team that's all looking at a similar sort of thing, you're all unstuck. So I want to talk very briefly about social bookmarking. What I want you now to do is to take the bookmarks out and pass it to someone next to you. That's the equivalent of social bookmarking. It uses a website that allows you to place that URL, that web address, in an accessible area so that you can get to it from wherever you've got a web connection, at home, on the train, from a mobile device. It also allows, if you choose to share it, your bookmarks to be shared by others as well. So it's a fantastic way of sharing knowledge with no more effort, really, than saving a normal bookmark. It's the same kind of process as saving a normal bookmark, but it allows you to be collaborative with your bookmark sharing. If you're working on a project team or in a team that's all sort of looking at the same ideas in the same department, looking at the same websites, it's a fantastic tool to allow that collaborative sharing to take place. And unless you choose to really beef your account up, it's free. So have a look at social bookmarking. Delicious is one account. Depending on who you listen to, it's on its way out, it's been bought out, it's going to disappear into the ether by the end of my session. There's plenty of social bookmarking sites out there. I personally use Digo, but there's lots of them out there. Go away and have a look at social bookmarking, and don't wait until May to do it. Okay, another month, please. Thank you. Please, you said October, because it allows me to tick one off without really doing any effort. QR codes. I had planned to talk briefly about QR codes until I found out that Paul was speaking in much greater depth about QR codes. We are using QR codes in our organisation. If you follow the URL on your calendar at a later date, you'll see how we're using QR codes in our, com in our uh, organisation. But Paul's going to talk about them in more depth than I possibly could. So thanks for picking that one. An easy win for me. Another month, please. November, is anybody here using Extra Normal or heard of Extra I know Julie's using it. I didn't even have to look. I knew Julie was using it. Somebody at the, at the back using Extra Normal? Okay. If you've got a message, I've, I've used this to get across quite a dry, uninspiring message. It wasn't particularly engaging. A message needed getting across, so I decided to put it across in a way that is a little bit comical. There's no getting away from that, but it's comical. So people look at it, and they listen to it. And they, I found that they engaged with it on the few occasions that I've used it more than a more traditional method of communication. Obviously, the trick is not to overuse it, otherwise it's just another extra normal film. I want to show you a very small example as to what I used it for. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Virtual Craig. Similar to Real Craig, only less handsome and less modest. As you may know, I have recently become the communications technologist, and one of my responsibilities is to review the current intranet. I'll shortly be inviting you to a meeting to discuss ideas as to how we can continue the great work that many of you started 18 months ago. There you get an idea. You can have dialogues taking place. If you can type then you can create a short movie like that. It's comical. The words don't quite translate. There's that lilt to it. But that in itself is the beauty of it. it it's actually quite fun. And the feedback I got from that, from the, this, this audience that I invited along, was extremely positive. And, and they, you know, they liked the, the fun way in which the message had been given. Extra normal, when I prepped this session, back in September, October time, when I first got the nod, not that I was panicking or anything, was free. 
are led to believe over recent months they've changed their pricing structure. Here we go. And now you have to buy elements of it. You always could upgrade, but now I believe from the word go, you have to buy elements of it. I still don't believe it's expensive for, for what it can do. Go on, Julie. What if you've already got an account? No, you can take it up and do it. If you open one at the moment, you open get a 300 points credit from the start. Okay. And Once they've hooked you. But a short two to three minute piece will probably cost you about 140 points. So right. you've got something to play with. You can get a few messages across then cheaply to begin with. Thank you very much for that, Julie. Appreciate it. So have a look at Extra Normal. If you want to get a message across, then you can get it across using this tool. It provides an embed code. So if you're using a virtual learning environment, Moodle, something like that, you can embed it within that, and all of a sudden, you're starting to, you know, you're allowed to create a portal, and you can drag content from all over the web into a single place. That's one of the options that will allow you to do that. Another month, please. December. December. Anybody here using SlideShare? Using it as in to push content out? Anybody using it to receive content? So, so more, yeah, I imagine that being the sort of ratio as it was. SlideShare is a wonderful tool. It allows you to put your PowerPoint slides up onto the internet and allow them to be viewed by others. And big deal, I'll just email you the PowerPoint presentation. What it allows it to be done, though, is because it's so collaborative, because it goes out onto the internet, you can either choose to share that with everybody, as I do, or you can choose to create a secret URL that you only pass on to certain people to kind of protect the sensitivity of the PowerPoint presentation. What you can also do is you can overlay a voice recording on top of your PowerPoint slides. So if I were to just launch my SlideShare presentation with no audio, you'd go back home and all you'd see are some pretty images on a screen with a few logos, and that would be it. Well, that's not what you're going to see if you choose to follow the URL that I tweeted out earlier on. What you are going to hear is me sat in my conservatory with a little bit of background noise going on. I tried, trust me, actually talking about each of these products in a linear fashion because there's no way I could get around that because I didn't have a real audience. So if you follow the URL, once you get back home, you'll see my slide shares. And if you want a reminder as to what this was about, then you can go and do that. And I talk perhaps with a little bit more ease because I had the luxury of time then about these some in much more detail. So um, those people that aren't here can benefit and those of you that are here can have a more in-depth reminder when you get back home. SlideShare is free to set up from the word go. You can upgrade to a pro account, which allows you to create more SlideShares and do more with the SlideShares. But I've found that what I need it for at this moment in time, it's more than acceptable as the free route. If you've got PowerPoint presentations to share, think about using SlideShare. Once again, it gives you an embed code to embed back within your organization if your learning portal or intranet or whatever supports it, bringing the content to you rather than having to go out and trust that people find it. Next month. January. Thanks, God, somebody got to January. If you haven't got a Twitter account yet, get one. If it's the only thing that you plan to do this year, set up a Twitter account. And once you've set your Twitter account up, I guarantee you it won't be the only thing you do this year. The networks it creates, the hierarchy that it creates, the links and the feeds and the conversation and the hints and the tips and, the, and, and all the conversation that's going on will truly, and I speak from experience, inspire you to go out and do something more than just sign up to a Twitter account. As a matter of interest, is there anybody here who does not have a Twitter account? Okay, so maybe a, th a third to a, a third to a, maybe it's slightly less than a third. Okay, okay. I was one last year. I didn't have a Twitter account. I struggled to set it up at the end of day one on a hotel Wi-Fi. Who was I kidding? That was going to work. I actually managed to set it up on a train Wi-Fi going home. I, I wouldn't have believed that was possible, but I must have got a lucky train. Set a Twitter account up. Once you're on Twitter, follow me. Not because I've got anything enlightening to say, believe me, but follow the people that I follow because they have got something to say. And all of a sudden, your network, within minutes, will have increased a thousandfold. And then follow that feed. And if you're confident, contribute to it. Tweet about it. Contribute. Add something in. If you're not confident to do that yet, that's absolutely fine. I didn't. Sit back and absorb the content that's going in. Some of it's crap. That would be the stuff that I'm tweeting then. But a lot of it is very, very good stuff. And look at that good stuff 
And that's where you'll find that all of a sudden your inspiration to do other things than just Twitter magnifies and increases. Another month, please. I'm pleased this one came out. I'm, I'm very conscious that we probably won't get all through 12 months because of the timings. But I'm pleased that somebody picked September. Thank you. This is old Joe Muggins here, back in September, delivering an unconference for some of our internal learning facilitators. And the reason I did that was our internal learning facilitators are very good. They're very good at delivering face-to-face -face activities, making them interactive, learner-focused, participative, appealing to sort of accelerated learning techniques. They're very, very good at delivering face-to-face -face events. They think e-learning is what I thought e-learning was. Click next, click next, click, do something on the screen. Click next, click next, click next. I took them away for a day, off-site, because we've got unrestricted access to the internet then, and actually did essentially what I'm doing now, but in much slower time. And I took them away, and I passed on the benefit. My, my wealth of a good eight or nine months of research was passed on to them. Some of them have ignored it. Some of them have taken away and started using it. Some, a lot of them are using social bookmarking because it's so simple to set up and it's very easy to pass on to your learner group as well. So once you've done some research, once you've got a bit of experience under your belt and you, you're confident with talking about these tools, don't keep it to yourself. Bring together the people within your organisation, your immediate team that might not actually be learning facilitators. If you're responsible for a training team or a learning team, bring them along, pass the word on. You won't get a 100% hit rate. Who is, is naive enough to believe that they would? But if one or two people take something away from that and then start to embed it and start to use it, it's been worth the investment. So, you know, pass on, you know, pass on the wealth of your knowledge in a couple of months' time or whenever you feel comfortable. We've got five minutes, Craig. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anybody know what that is? It's a flip camera, and we've got one sat here, a flip camera. When I prepped this session, I was, full of, I was full of angst and I was full of anger because we can't allow cameras on our site. Understandably so in some areas, maybe not so in others. Only a fortnight ago, and it kind of, I'm quite pleased it's happened at the time it has, I've actually got permission for eight or so of these. You wouldn't believe the documentation that goes with it. Maybe some would, it's a nightmare. Essentially, eight of these now are going to be passed around the organisation to nominated people, who can only use them on nominated PCs, having read War and Peace and signed that they've read War and Peace. Ticked, box has been ticked. Everyone's happy. They must have learned something because they've, they've ticked the box. <laughs> and they're actually going to be able to use these to generate some user-generated content in their workplaces without having to call on our film crew to go and do it and the rigmarole process that goes behind that. They're going to be able to do it on the hoof. I was inspired to do this by coming here last year and listening to Peter Butler talk, who then worked at BT, about their Dare to Share project. If you've not heard of the Dare to Share product, fear not. If you follow the URL that's on your calendar, it will take you to a YouTube video where Peter Butler talks and his team that supported him in a fair bit of detail about how they went and adopted this sort of approach. And it wasn't just flip cameras. They used all sorts of mobile cameras to record content from their field staff. Think about how distributed BT is. And then feed that back into, for want of a better word, an internal YouTube so have a look at mobile technologies. These aren't free. If they are, I've made a big mistake over the past couple of weeks ordering eight of them. They're not free, and the time to invest to get people to use them isn't free either. If a picture paints a thousand words, then what does a moving talking picture do? So have a think about using some sort of mobile video technology. Very simple to use. I can use them. So that equates to being very simple to use. Another month, please, if you would. I uh, wonder why. Thanks very much, Phil. Yeah. Okay, July. I've, I don't know why I didn't join the dots on that much quicker than I did. <laughs> network. If you're not part of a learning network at the moment, then become part of one. If you want to become part of a learning network that not singularly focuses on learning technologies, but does a, you know, does a bloody good job at, at looking at that area, look at these two. You're all members of the Learning and Skills Group. Whether you wanted to be or not, you are a member of the Learning and Skills Group by virtue that you're attending this conference. I have in the past, and only months ago, gone on there, posted a question, 
within the space of half a morning received back half a dozen pieces of feedback that I would never have considered. I would never have, have gone into that level of research come flooding back into me from people on this network here. The e-learning network, wonderful, wonderful networking opportunity. Only joined it in June, July because I was very kindly invited as a guest by Barry Sampson. I'd, I'd evaded it by that point. What a mistake I'd made over the previous six months. See if your organisation can afford for you to become, or your organisation to become a member of the e-learning network. The face-to-face -face events that they run, the webinars that they run, the online social platform that they have to communicate alongside with is just as good as the learning and skills group. Most people are in both, to be honest. The same old rogues gallery, same old picked faces keep cropping up. Have a look at both of these networking opportunities. One is free. One is dependent upon what you want to get out of the network and how you want to attend in terms of the costings and things. But trust me, whether they're free or not, both of these networking organisations are absolutely worth their weight in gold in what you can take away. And what I really like about them is they're not steeped, unless you want them to be, in academic, long-winded research and so on and so forth. They're ideas that you can go to and you can grab them and you can walk away from that session or that online conference or that meeting and do something with it tomorrow, not some sort of highbrow cultural change program. Have a look at these networking organisations. Again, the URL is on the bottom of the card. Just a couple more minutes, Craig. And then we'll okay, I'll do one more, and then I'm going to skip to what is going to be the final slide, whether I'd had 25 minutes or 24 hours. There was always going to be one thing that I was going to do at the end. So, we've got, a couple, we've got quite a few left. August? August? Two people said August, so I guess it's popular. What's going on in August? Ah, Okay. For those of you that are looking at facilitating learning online, and I don't necessarily mean producing rapid e-learning, because, yeah, that ticks the box, it, it facilitates learning online. But for those of you who are actually looking at tools such as maybe Blackboard or Moodle or virtual learning environments, for those of you looking at that structured, um, collaborative online platform, which allows you to do a lot, have a look at what Sheffield College has got to offer. Sheffield College won two programmes. Letal, spelt as it sounds, learning to teach online. That's a good three or four month program, at least, that goes through the pedagogical considerations of delivering learning online, as opposed to doing it face to face. Because although some are similar, some are wildly different as well. It's a great program to go through. It's ran inside Sheffield College's virtual learning environment, which is a Moodle. So you are truly living the dream by learning how to deliver in the very platform. My facilitator was based in New South Wales, in Oz. What a great opportunity to show the ability to facilitate learning, quite literally, the other side of the world. I then went on to do a programme with them called Getting to Grips with Moodle. Admittedly, I perhaps should have done one before the other. Getting to Grips with Moodle takes you to the beginning of the process and says, if you've never logged into Moodle as a facilitator of learning before, here's step one. Nine or eight or nine weeks later, you come out at the end being quite fluent at how to facilitate learning inside Moodle, how to create the resources and bring in these embed codes that I've been talking about, the ability to drag content in from around the internet and put it in one place. Extremely cheap courses. The Getting to Grips with Moodle was around £175. The Letol was maybe £250. Admittedly, depending on your organisation, that might not be cheap, and I, I obviously understand that my organisation you know, is, is perhaps in a safer position than some at the moment. But in terms of the knowledge that it brought me, again, just like all the other things I've talked about, absolutely worth their weight in gold. So if you're looking at a VLE or a Moodle or just are thinking about facilitating learning online in general and don't have a platform to do it on, because I don't yet, I've tried, but I don't. If you follow my Twitter stream, it's literally this, this angst teenager's journey to try and get something happening in their organisation. So uh, if you're ever really, really bored, follow my Twitter stream and it's, uh, you know, you can feel my pain then. So that's the last slide I'm going to talk about. I'm actually going to skip forward now to the end of the year. And I'm going to ask each of you to take out your calendar and to turn over the title card, the one that's got the young child scrolling on a blackboard. I'm actually going to ask you to borrow a pen now if you haven't got a pen in front of you. But I want you to write on there one thing, just one thing, that you are going to do now. 
after this session, after this conference. It doesn't have to be anything that I've talked about. I probably won't take it to heart. I promise. Something that you've taken away from these two days that you're going to do, or you're going to research, or you're going to start the ball rolling, because things don't happen overnight, I know that. One thing that you are going to do as a result of this conference. And I don't want you to sit on it this time. I want two or three of you to be open enough and confident enough to actually sort of tell us what it is that you're planning to do with it. And I want the rest of you to turn that card face down so that your writing is uppermost and put it back in your calendar pack just to remind you what you've committed to doing after this conference. So two or three people, if you'd be so bold. Yes, please. (laughs) Setting up a Twitter account. Okay, we've got one potential convert there. Stick with it. Stick with it. Don't... A definite convert. Stick with it. You, You probably won't get the immediate benefits, but stick with it. Follow me. Follow who I follow, more importantly, and you will get something from it quickly. Two more. Yes, hello. Look at the extra normal. Okay, look at extra normal. Does a lot more than what I showed. They're different camera angles, different backgrounds, different characters, multi character dialogue. So it's a great QA. You can do a lot of QA, frequently asked questions type thing in extra normal. And a final one, final committal. Oh, go on. Which recorded? <laughs> the rest of the world, then. Global. Are we talking about the slide share presentation or the video recording? Okay, well, both will be available. I mean, the slide share is up there now. I posted it late morning this morning. So, me rabbiting on in my conservatory with, I think, a dog barking or something and rain on the, on the roof in the background. But that's available now. The video footage will obviously be in, in the fullness of time. But as you're a member of the Learning and Skills Group, You'll be notified as to when that footage is online so you can review that at a later date. Thank you for those three people that sort of came forward with their ideas. I hope that everybody's put something down and I hope that when you get back, whether you were vocal in here or not, that you do have a look at some of these products. Or if not my, if not my session, have a look at doing something differently. Thank you ever so much for your time this afternoon. There's a lot going on. Thanks for coming Thanks, here. Craig. Thank you.